Hello everyone, my name is uh, Ryan Jones, I'm one of the applications engineers here at Unitronics. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit different webinar. Um, we're going to just go over the entire line of Vision products uh, and the accessories and I.O. options that they come with, uh, as well as the different software utilities that we have. We'll kind of just give a, a brief synopsis of everything that Unitronics has to offer. We're going to be covering all the different hardware models, the differences between. Uh, we're going to go over the different I.O. options available, different accessories in terms of communication modules um, uh, or cellular modems. We'll be going over the software utilities, uh, programming, and um, uh, other utilities. And then lastly, we'll just give you a couple tips on how to get started if this is your first time working with Unitronics or this is your first program. Uh, we'll show you how to kind of get started in the right direction. All right, so the first PLC that we're going to start with is the Vision 120. This is one of our very first uh, models <clears throat> for the Vision line. Um, it is a 2.4-inch LCD screen. Um, it is not an ASCII screen, as you can see. Uh, it is a graphic display, even though it is just um, LCD. So we can do graphs uh, and trends. We can show um, a tank filling or, or draining. We can have up to 255 different screens on one unit. It does have a full alphanumeric keypad, so the user can enter from the physical buttons a numeric value or a uh, ASCII value. In terms of the PLC itself, there's 10 different models. Uh, the reason for the 10 different models is there is onboard I.O. Uh, each one is going to come with a different selection of I.O. Some have more digital inputs, some will have more temperature inputs, for etc. Um, it's best to look in the catalog or online for the specific details. Uh, I'm not going to cover them all in this presentation today. It's going to give you more of a general overview. So if you do have a specific uh, spec question or you're trying to find the, the perfect uh, I.O. configuration for your project, highly recommend looking at the, the catalog or our online resources. And I'll show you where those are um, towards the end. Uh, the 120 is um, ca compatible with expansion I.O. So even though it does have some onboard units, if you uh, outgrow those and need to add more, we can always add um, with the XA2X. For a small controller, it also has PID as well as Auto-Tune for temperature control. It has recipe and data logging capabilities via the data tables. We have 120 uh, kilobytes of internal memory that we can use to store recipes and pull them out as we need or as a small um, data logging uh, cache. It is NEMA 4X or IP65, and it is easy to program, as with all of our units. Communication available out of the box. It is compatible with the GPRS GSM modem. It is compatible with SMS text messaging. Uh, it can do Modbus. Um, it can do CAN bus. Uh, note, um, not all the 120s will have CAN bus. Only the ones that end in the letter C will have CAN bus. For example, the V120-22-R2C. And inside that, the, for CAN bus protocols, we have CAN open, UniCAN, CAN layer 2. There is two built-in serial ports. You can actually see them on the left there in the picture. Uh, they are dual ports, meaning that it is 232 or 45, uh, depending on how you configure it. There is usually an internal jumper that we need to switch, as well as just a minor change to the program. All right, next we're going to talk about the, the V200 series. Now, the V200 series... Um, uh, vary drastically in their appearance, so we'll kind of showcase them one by one. So here's the Vision 230. It's the, the smallest of the bunch. You'll see it has a full keypad, not only the alphanumeric, but it also has function keys on both the left and the right side of the screen, as well as arrow keys. Next is the Vision 260. This is a widescreen um, blue uh, negative screen. Now we have the, the 280. The 280 is actually a touch screen, unlike the previous two, uh, as well as the buttons. So we have uh, both. 
The 290 is very similar to the 280, except without the buttons. It is a touchscreen only model. And lastly, the 530. Uh, 530 is the same as the 290, but with a smaller uh, faceplate. So with all of these units, we're again going to have the two built-in serial ports. One of them is going to be dedicated to RS-232, and the other one is going to be RS-232 or 45 configurable. Uh, they all contain a built-in CAN bus port. There is an expansion slot for a third communication module. You can put in a third serial card or an Ethernet card. They are snap-in compatible. Uh, these do not actually come with any I.O. Um, out of the box. But in, we'll, in just a moment, we'll talk about the snap-in uh, options that we have. As well, they are still able to use the same data table features. Uh, and they are also able to use the expandable I.O. These are all NEMA 4X or IP65. So here's just a quick side-by-side -side comparison. Going from left to right, our screen size, the smallest is a 3.2 inch, 5.4, 4.7, and then 5.7 inch for the 290 and the 530. The 280, 290, and the 530, like I said, is our touch models. They are black and white. All right, next we're going to talk about the enhanced series of controllers. You'll notice right away uh, the biggest difference is now we are in color, with the exception of the 130. Um, but a couple of things you won't notice just by looking at it are we can do um, SD cards. Before I mentioned for the data table, we have a finite uh, 120 kilobytes for our data tables. If we go over that memory, there is no way to add more. However, if you have an enhanced controller, we can pop in an SD card up to 32 gigabytes, and we can store information there. We can also use the SD card to create a clone. We can put an SD card into one PLC, download uh, the program and all the operands and any uh, data on that controller onto the SD card, take the SD card out, bring it to a new controller or an unprogrammed controller, and download all those uh, programs and data. So we'll have two units that are identical. As well, we have the option to use the string library. The string library is our way of having multiple languages on one controller without having to have an HMI screen for each. So when you create your program, uh, instead of putting in generic text for all your descriptions, you'll instead put a tag. And just by hitting a button, we can switch those tags from uh, the different languages that you've put in. So from English to Spanish, just by hitting one button, we can have them all switch. We have built-in alarm capabilities. The um, OS will handle displaying the alarms. All the user needs to do during the programming stage is to define what's going to trigger the alarm or the severity of the alarm and when to show it. And then the controller will actually take care of the HMI part. Uh, as well, easy, easy data trending, same idea. All we need to do is, in the programming stage, is tell the controller which values we want to trend and how we want to set up the graph, and it will automatically plot it on a XY plane for us on the HMI. We have the ability to host a web server. We have both a simple, easy-to-use um, web server included in VisiLogic, or if you prefer, you can also use HTML code to create your own web pages. You'll be able to link directly to values on your controller. Uh, it's two-way as well. Not only can we show values on a web page, but we can also send values to a controller. We can send email, as well as we can attach any file uh, locally stored on the SD card in the controller and attach it to that email. They can function as a DF1 slave. And for CAN bus, they also have the added benefit of being able to use J1939. 
uh, most frequently seen in diesel automotive uh, applications. So here's a side-by-side -side look for all our enhanced models. Um, they are all color touch with the exception of the Vision 130. He has all the uh, benefits and features of the enhanced models, but he has the more traditional um, full keypad and uh, black and white screen. We come in a variety of sizes, the Vision 350, three and a half inches, 570, 5.7. The 570J is identical to the 570, but with a flat uh, faceplate. Vision 1040, 10.4 inches, and the largest one we offer right now is the Vision 1210 at 12.1 inches. As well as being bigger, both the Vision 1040 and the 1210 benefit from a higher resolution, 800 by 600 pixels SVGA as compared to 320 by 240. So not only do you have more real estate to um, create your HMI screens, but they're also going to be crisper and have a uh, higher resolution. The Vision 350 and the Vision 1040 uh, also feature func physical function keys on the uh, bottom of the controller. The 130 and the 350, similar to the 120, do have onboard I.O., so they don't necessarily need um, expansion I.O. or a snap-in. There's 10 different models for each. Again, they kind of range. They all have a um, collective group of uh, everything. They're all going to have digital in, digital out, for example. Some will have more uh, transistor outputs. Some will have relay outputs. Some will have analog. Uh, again, just consult your catalog or the website to find the one that best fits your application. The rest, the 570, 1040, and 1210, like the 200 series, um, will use the snap-in model instead. Special note uh, for the 130 and the 350, we do offer what's called the TR models, the TRA-22, TR-34, TR-20, and the TR-6. What's special about these controllers is they have our fastest high speed in and high speed out out of any of our uh, models. From this added um, speed, we can do advanced PTO functions. So we can set up a profile for motion control. We set up the profile in the program. We set our home position. And we can tell the controller uh, the absolute position to move to. And the controller will take care of how to arrange that move, when to ramp up, how long to um, move for, and then when to ramp down. If you are, have a uh, motion control application in mind, I uh, highly suggest going with one of the 130s or the 350s TR models. Okay, uh, I mentioned before we do have expansion uh, I.O. The simplest here is the EXA2X. It's just a small bridge from our PLC to a DIN rail. Can't see in the picture here, but it mounts onto a DIN rail. Um, there is a two meter cable um, included in the box. We do sell lar longer cables up to 20 meters. From the EXA2X, we daisy chain from left to right um, any of our I.O. modules. I.O. modules we have are kind of an a la carte method, meaning that you just select what you need and none of what you don't. For example, we have the DI-16, that's 16 digital inputs, or the TO-16, 16 transistor outputs. So you can kind of pick and choose what you need for your application or what's missing from your application and add it through the I.O. modules. Some of the special ones that we do offer, we do have the ATC-8. That's going to be eight analog inputs or eight thermocouple inputs. We have a load cell module, the LC-1 and the LC-3. The LC3 can do three load cells, and the LC1 can only be one per module. As well, we have PT100 and RTD um, I.O. modules. If 20 meters isn't long enough for you, um, or you need to uh, mount them remotely, we do offer the EXRC1. 
The EXRC1 actually functions over CAN bus instead of the normal cable, which allows us to have wire runs up to one kilometer. Uh, unfortunately, with the EXA2X, we can only have one EXA2X per PLC. Uh, and on each EXA2X, we can only have eight modules. Uh, EXRC1, however, we can have up to 60 EXRC1s on one CAN bus network with eight modules on each. So if you do need more than eight modules, um, it might be a good idea to go with the XRC1 instead, because we can have multiples in the same network. We also offer the EXL line, or I'm sorry, the XL line of um, I.O. adapters. They are high-density I.O. modules, so they have uh, a larger grouping of both digital, analog um, inputs and outputs. The EXD16A3R08 and the EXD16A3T016 actually have the expansion adapter built in. So if you do grab the EX uh, models, you do not need to get the XA2X. It's actually built into the unit. Um, if you have an application where you're concerned about uh, space inside the cabinet, if you don't have a lot of room to be putting all these I.O. modules, uh, it might make sense to go with either the high-density uh, I.O. D16A3, RO16, or uh, the EXD16A3, because we'll be able to remove the um, EXA2X from the equation, and as well, we have more I.O. per square inch. I mentioned before that we have snap-ins for our larger units. So that's the, the V200 series, the 570s, the 1040, and the 1210. There are seven different snap-in modules available. Again, they all have a pretty good mix of uh, analog and digital inputs, but certain uh, models will have more of um, uh, one or the other. Some have more analog, some have more transistor, etc. cetera. Um, just consult the, the catalog. Um, uh, as well online, we have a comparison table that you can take a quick look, take a look at and decide which one best fits your application. Uh, I should note that you can use the snap-in with either the AXA2X or the XRC1. Just because you have one doesn't mean you can't use the other. In fact, you can have all three running if you prefer. We do have the option to add COM modules. First one I'm going to talk about is Ethernet. We actually get a lot of uh, different features out of the Ethernet. Um, first, we can do Modbus IP, basically Modbus over Ethernet. We can send emails. Uh, we can host the web servers. We can do ASCII protocol over IP. Um, the different uh, sockets or ports that we support, TCP, TCP RAW, UDP, UDP RAW, HTML, FTP, and others. Um, with port forwarding set up, you will be able to access your PLC from basically anywhere in the world. Um, you can have your controller uh, set up in a remote location. As long as there is uh, internet access at that location, you can make changes to your program. You can download a new program. You can go online with the controller. We can um, uh, data log remotely um, all from anywhere with internet access. As well as the Ethernet module, we do offer a couple others. We have the additional RS-232-485 port, if you need three ports, as well as an isolated version. We do have the option of Profibus as a slave. Uh, it's only on the 130 and the 350. And the, uh, the 130 and 350 as well do not have CAN bus built in, but it is an optional uh, communication module. It does not take up the same slot as the um, Ethernet or serial card. So if you do want to add CAN bus, you can also have uh, Ethernet. And we also offer what's called the uh, Infora modem. Uh, say we still want to have the same um, ability to access our controller from anywhere in the world but the site does not have internet access, we can install an Infora modem. It's going to operate on the GSM uh, cellular network. 
We're also going to have the added feature of being able to send and receive SMS text messages. Great part about this, if an alarm happens, uh, it's triggered on the PLC, we can immediately send a text message to um, those in charge or those who need to be aware of the problem. It goes straight to their phone, they see it almost immediately, and they can actually text back. So if they need to turn something off or they need authorization to turn something off, they can send a special text message back to the PLC. When it receives the message, it can then operate uh, or shut down the process. Great thing about text messages as well is they are instant, um, as opposed to if we send an email, it usually goes into someone's inbox with 20 other unread emails, and you don't know when they're actually going to get along to reading it. But with text messaging, um, you're much more likely to get the response quicker. The Infora modem will connect to your PLC through the serial port. Uh, it does come as a kit. Everything you need is in the box. You will have the modem, you'll have the antenna, all the cabling you'll need to get set up. The only thing that is not included in the box is a SIM card. Uh, you'll need to contact your local uh, cellular provider and set up a data plan, and they will provide you with a SIM card. All right, so that's, uh, that covers all our hardware options. Now I want to go over our software options as well. Uh, all of our products are a one uh, all-in-one solution, so right out of the box. Um, not only do you have your um, HMI and PLC integrated into one, but you also get all of our software uh, at no extra charge. The first and probably the most important, of course, is Visualogic. This is our programming platform. Um, this is how we create uh, HMI screens as well as ladder logic for our controller. Uh, if you haven't used VisiLogic before, uh, it's actually very easy to learn, um, and the HMI and the ladder is all in one integrated program. So, for example, we don't have to program our HMI separately from our ladder. They do go hand in hand, um, and we can easily switch back between one and the other. Uh, we are constantly updating VisiLogic with new features and more improvements. Um, however, if you have an older application that you need to, um, and the code was written in a particular version, we do offer what's called version swapper that will allow you to basically roll back your version of VisiLogic to any of our previous versions so you can stay on the same page as when that application was released. If you are familiar with uh, VisiLogic, we do have a feature built into it called Remote Access. While connected to the controller, we can go online, we can see the HMI screen, and we can interface with it. It's a very handy feature. However, we don't want to, obviously we don't want to give our, uh, our project file to the end user, Excuse me. but we still want them to have this feature. So we uh, offer Remote Access as a standalone program the customer will be able to load it onto their laptop or computer, connect to the controller, and interface through it directly from their PC. So if you'll see in the window here, uh, that this is what it looks like. So you see my HMI screen for my 1040, as well as the function keys will appear on the bottom. And I can use my mouse just like I would my finger on the HMI screen. I can press any buttons that are there. I can use the function keys. I can enter any uh, variables. Uh, anything that you can do standing in front of the PLC, you can do through remote access. Uh, as well, if we want the customer to be able to download their program uh, but not have access to the original program, as in they can't see the code or make any changes to it, we do offer a program called Uni Downloader, where we'll be able to send the customer a compiled version of your project that they will only be able to download. They won't be able to see the original code, and they won't be able to make any changes to it. All they'll be able to do is download it to their controller. Data export. That export will connect to um, a controller or a group of controllers at a given time schedule that you set up and log any information on the controller. We can um, gather all the information from all the data tables. We can grab any group of operands, and we can store this information on a remote server, on your PC basically, uh, as spreadsheets and Excel files. 
So at the end of every day, if you want to take a snapshot of the, the count for the day, let's say it's a manufacturing application, um, we can just set up that export that at 8 o'clock every day, connect to the controller, grab the numbers for the day, and save them in a spreadsheet. As long as that uh, export is still running uh, on this uh, computer, we'll always be getting this uh, record of information. If you want to integrate one of our PLCs into a SCADA system, we offer OPC server. As well, we have DDE server. DDE server will allow uh, you to link cells in an Excel spreadsheet uh, in real time to values on your controller. So you can use the graphing options to uh, organize that information and show it uh, in your Excel in real time. As soon as a value changes on the PLC, you'll see that change in your spreadsheet. All our uh, SD utilities are bundled into one package. It's called SD Card Suite. We do actually need this to um, format an SD card before it goes into the controller. It does have to be prepared, um, and that is included in the SD Card Suite. Uh, as well as we have the SD Card Suite uh, installed, you'll be able to uh, remotely connect to the controller and view the contents of the SD card. You'll be able to open any files that are on it. Um, you'll be able to make backups, again, in Excel format of any of the files that are on the SD card. Uh, and you don't have to actually physically remove the SD card from the controller to do this. We can do it all over a serial or Ethernet connection. Remote operator. Remote operator is kind of the big brother to remote access. So remote access just allows us to go online and view the controller. Uh, remote operator allows us to set up any number of PLCs uh, and tile them. So you'll see here I have an example of a Modbus application. So to test, um, I have both of them open so I can read and write values in between them. If you have an application that has multiple screens or you just have um, multiple locations, you want to be viewing them all at once, remote operator will allow us to do that. I mentioned you need downloader before, so this is kind of what it looks like when the customer gets it. We can, as well as downloading an application to the controller, we can also do an OS update at the same time. So you can prepare a what's called a UDC file ahead of time for your customer that will have all the necessary firmware and the application uh, to download to their controller. They just need to load up uh, UNI downloader, open up the UDC file, and then UD Downloader will take care of the rest. It will download the OS that you've uh, chosen ahead of time and the application. So all the user needs to do is set it up and click Go. Download Manager, again, is the big brother to that. So the UD Downloader it, uh, is a one-to-one -one application. So if you had a series of controllers you needed to do, you would have to do them one at a time. Download Manager allows us to set up a project where, in series, we will connect to any number of controllers, either through uh, serial or Ethernet, and download our application. Again, this is all using a UDC format, so it is pre-compiled. Um, so the end user can only download it. They cannot make any changes to your program. Lastly, we have Univision licensing. What this allows us to do is we can give a permanent uh, uh, key to a controller, and we can create a program that will only work for that specific key or portions of that program. So um, if we want to ensure that if we send a copy of our program or our uh, downloader to a customer, we want to make sure that they actually purchased, let's say we're an OEM, that they purchased the controllers from us. We can use Uni license to ensure that it's going to the right controllers and not uh, any more than that we've already agreed upon. 
Um, you can uh, add levels of access, so you can block either your entire program or maybe just portions of it. And you can also have levels of access. So, for example, um, you can give them the key for just level one. that will unlock uh, some of your program. Or we can give them all access with a separate key that will unlock the rest of the program. And what's the common thing about all these software tools? They are free. You can download all of our software, uh, all of our utilities, all of our programming software, any updates that we have, any OS updates. You can always get them from our website, and they will always be free. All right, so that, that covers all the, the hardware and the software that we offer. Uh, if this, again, if this is your first time working with a vision controller, uh, I want to show you a couple of online resources that we have to kind of point you in the right direction. So this is our website, unitronics.com. If you are looking for more detailed um, information or um, synopsis of all the products that we offer, you can click on PLC and HMI. Here you'll see our online uh, catalog. If you are now ready to begin your application and start programming, if you click here on support, this is our main support page. The very first link, of course, you'll see is the downloads. All the software that I just mentioned will be available here, as well as any of the previous versions. If you have a specific um, wiring question or you have a technical question in terms of a spec, uh, we offer our technical library online. All of our documents um, will be available up there. We do have an, uh, an active online forum. Uh, it's a great place to share ideas and brainstorm with other Unitronics users. If you have an idea for a project or want to see if someone has tried something in the past, this is a great resource to kind of uh, ask the community what they've tried. We do do training seminars quite frequently. Uh, we try to have one uh, at least once a month. They are four days long. Um, the first two days uh, covers everything having to do with programming. Uh, we've taught um, people with 10 years PLC experience and then people uh, that have never actually done any ladder before. So it is a beginner um, or entry level course. The next two days uh, we dig into the more complicated stuff. So we will go over all the different communication options. We will cover all the more advanced options. Um, the great thing about this is you do not have to attend all four days. Um, you only need you can sign up for them individually. So if you feel you are a more advanced user and you just want to come for the last two days, that's fine. Or if you're a beginner and just kind of want to get your feet wet, you're welcome to come for just the first two days as well. Uh, lastly, we have webinars, just like this one that uh, we're doing right now. Uh, all the features that I mentioned, PID, um, SD cards, trending, uh, we try to have a video online for one of each. They're about an hour long. They'll go over the basic features and capabilities of the topic, and then they will do a sample program. Uh, the great thing about it as well is after we're done, we will actually post the program that we used. So, for example, here's one we did about timers. So we have our link to the YouTube video. And then right below, we can actually download the project file that they created in the webinar. So I can download it and follow along. And, of course, if you ever have any questions or run into any trouble,